at our little model here, our next topic is nutrients. And as I was mentioning, um, one of the things that I learned is that nutrient deficiencies do prevent the action of hormones. And zinc is an essential part of the estradiol, testosterone, and growth hormone receptor. Cobalt's necessary for estradiol function, chromium for progesterone, boron for estrogen and testosterone. Methyl donors are needed for estrone to be metabolized appropriately. Um, and the, the, the literature abounds all through the regular literature uh, on all of the nutrients that are necessary for activation of any of your hormones. So without looking at nutrients, we're not going to be able to have a, the maximum effect we can. Now, when we're talking about nutrients, obviously you'll have people come in and say, well, can I just get all my nutrients from food? and uh, eating well. And the answer to that question has changed over time. The American Nutritional Council has come out and uh, done studies showing that uh, an apple of today is probably about a fourth of a nutrient of the apple of 10 years ago. Our soils are leached. Um, we're having uh, you know, the new threat, which is, of course, the genetically modified stuff that's everywhere. And uh, there's all kinds of uh, things that make it so the nutrients are not where they used to be. So although I will be making, the, the, the major part of this is going to be about what to eat and what we recommend, but even the American Medical Association two years ago came out and finally said, because the soil is so leached, that it seems um, appropriate for every body to take a multivitamin mineral supplement. So it turns out that a multivitamin mineral supplement is one of the, one of the basic things that everybody should be on. Um, and I'll show you what I'm looking for. And really, if you look at it, you'll see people, if anybody saw the, the Suzanne Summers on, on television talking about how many supplements she was taking, and she rolled out 80 supplements, and you talk to people in these conferences, and they're on tons of different things, and you're wondering, oh my God, like can I even swallow all that stuff? But there, there are some very basics, and they're supported by science. First, the essential multivitamin mineral that you want to make sure is the strongest and purest form you can get, and two, is the purest form of omega-3 that you can find. So if you just are on those two things, you're covered a major part of the basis, not that you might not need to be on other things if you're found to be deficient for short periods of time. But the best part about the whole nutrition thing is there's a way of measuring your nutrition so you don't have to keep guessing. So you can always know whether or not you really are where you need to be. And notice in this picture all the different colors, because colors are going to be one of the things we recommend. Eight different colors per day in your vegetable intake keeps the doctor away. Um, so in, in our recommendation, you'll notice a reversal of the traditional food pyramid. Um, I know you can't see this very well, and when I, when I put it into a graphic, it didn't come out. But the basic idea, and you'll see many books, this is not rocket science, and people talking about changing your plate from a quarter in the morning to third in the afternoon, and it's very complicated, but basically, if you maintain a plate, and if you look on this easel, you'll get the basic idea of 50% vegetables, 25% protein, and 25% complex carbohydrates, so a quarter, quarter, and 50% vegetables, and that's not per day that's per meal, that's for every meal we eat because in order to balance those insulin curves that we saw this morning, the best way to bring that insulin curve from the high swing and the low swing back into the middle is to do this. So for example, you're eating an ice cream and um, you're eating an ice cream and you spike very high. But if you add a handful of walnuts to your ice cream, you've lowered the glycemic index because you brought the curve back down. So anytime you match your carbs, and that's not such a great example, but at least it makes you realize that you can eat ice cream. Um, so th there's little things that we need to know, like we drink wine, take some protein with it. You know, whatever the deal is that we're, where we're eating carbs, match it with protein 
and 50% uh, vegetables. And we actually, in our nutritional program, uh, recommend that people take vegetables in the morning, even though it's kind of hard to do. But uh, you all might have gotten a recipe for a raw vegetable smoothie, which is one possibility, which uh, actually uh, Margaret, who's here and going to take you through some mind-body stuff later on, actually has gotten her child to drink this. And her child is only two, two years old. So if we can get someone like that to drink it, I know we can. Um, but protein, these are general recommendations, lean meat, fish, eggs, uh, preferably organic, and we'll be talking about that. Um, but when we eat uh, soy sources, and what is that? Soy sources are a little overrated, and the main reason is because um, most soy products are processed. And they're processed heavily. And in order to process them, petroleum is required. So the benefits of soy actually are only applicable to fermented forms of unprocessed soy, which means tempeh, miso, nato. When you see people talk about soy depresses thyroid function, or soy does this and soy does that, those studies have been done in people who switched from being non-vegetarian to all of a sudden eating soy meat, soy cheese, soy bread, soy rice, you know, soy everything. And all of those products are processed, including all of the milk. Not only are they processed, but they're highly acidic. And if you want to be alkaline, which we'll be talking about, you have to, t to stick to the fermented uh, soy products, which are the miso nato and, and tempeh. This is for vegetarians, for their protein sources, we recommend that. Lentil, legumes, um, whole grains. Um, and whole grains, a whole grain basically means that it includes the all parts of the grain, the endosperm, the ectosperm, the entire part of the seed which carries much more nutrients than just the seed, just, just the inside itself. And um, one of the biggest revelations to me over these last few years has been how many different whole grains there are that I had absolutely no uh, idea existed. And nowadays, if you go into the grocery store, um, you will find that these are all available. And they're, uh, they're available, and they're high in omega-3s, and uh, these are things which each of us should start to experiment with. We have now put together a recipe book with kit quinoa recipes and, and um, kamut millet. All of these things are things to be, be tried. They're very nutritious, much more nutritious than eating the kind of grains that we have access to on a regular basis, and they're becoming much more popular. Um, but comp they count as complex carbs, including butter squash, acorn squash, spaghetti squash, sweet potatoes. These are complex carbs. Um, as far as legumes, Garbanzo, mung, lentil, kidney, black bean, as much of a mix as you can get. The best thing about this is not only do you get a high dose of B vitamins, but you get phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylserine, which come from these plants, which are highly important for neurological function. Uh, as you may know, many neurological centers uh, where they do IV nutritionals for neurological dysfunction are using phosphatidyl and phosphatidylserine IV. You can get them from legumes. But more importantly, if you sprout these, and interestingly, you can sprout grains too. Not only can you sprout legumes, but you can sprout grains. And the important thing about sprouting grains is that it increases the bioavailability of your nutrients by many fold, two to five fold, just by sprouting them. Um, and it also increases the digestibility because it activates the enzymes. And again, nowadays this is something that one can get. You can get sproutable uh, beans, you can buy them in different bags, and I don't know if any of you have been following the media on the fact that, um, you know, we're basically come to a time where we have to learn how to grow and sprout and do a lot of our own food things. And this is not a nicety, this is actually going to become a necessity to the point where it will probably be taught in the schools. So.